There is a brand new Sora competitor on the market and it actually looks pretty good. AI actors can now intelligently change their emotion based on the words that they are saying. This is your AI film news of the week. I want to kick things off with a very practical and interesting tool that came from the research team at Adobe. The tool is called Video Giga GAN, and basically it allows you to up-res footage in a very realistic way. They have some really interesting examples on their website. For example, we have this video of this man blinking, and this was shot in 128 by 128 pixels, so super low resolution. But then whenever they ran it through the algorithm, it actually did an amazing job at bringing back the facial textures and the details in the hair. A lot of times you'll hear criticism that AI upscaled footage looks plasticky or that skin looks too smooth. But using tools like this, we can really imagine that upresing footage will be as simple as dragging and dropping in effect. And there are some really cool other examples on the website. So we have this pancake scene and uh, now we have just really high res, delicious looking pancakes. We have this footage of basically wine being poured into a wine glass. And whenever it runs through the algorithm, it's super, super high resolution. And the same is true with this waterfall scene. You can see that really abstract, you can barely make out what is happening, but after it's run through the algorithm, it really did an amazing job with cleaning up that scene. It seems like the Adobe team really is at the forefront of AI upresing. The team at Synthesia came out with their expressive AI avatars this last week, and it's pretty cool. Basically, you can type in text and the avatars will emotionally respond and change their facial structure based on the words that are spoken and typed into the prompt. You can go over to their website to see examples of these actors talking. For example, we have this video here. I am very happy. I am so upset. Okay, not too bad. As you can see, it kind of seems a bit more like a person pretending to be an AI rather than an AI pretending to be a person. So it's this really interesting kind of in-between space where it's not fully emotive like a real person, but it's actually pretty darn good. They have some other examples on their website. This one uh, really made me laugh. Hey, I'm Kayla, one of Synthesia stock AI avatars. I'm looking forward to helping you create videos. <laughs> There's just something about her eyes that comes across as a little dead. It kind of seems like that old video, I am your grandma <laughs> from a long time ago. They actually have a cool demo over on their website. If you just click on the free demo button, you can type in any text you want and just test out what is possible with the tool. Now I did a quick demo earlier where I basically uh, comped in this background. Let's go ahead and see what the result was. Ah, uh, you wouldn't believe the mess I woke up to this morning. My cat Muffins went on a trash adventure last night. I walked into the kitchen and there was garbage everywhere. So as you can see, this character, it is expressive, but it's not finding those subtle nuances with human emotion at this point. It seems like it really pushes into disgust and it really pushes into happiness, but those in-between emotions and those subtle nuances aren't quite there just yet. But that being said, Synthesia just raised $90 million on a $1 billion evaluation. And I would say that their exploration of AI avatars is just beginning. Again, you can go test out this tool and demo it for yourself over on their website. I didn't have to pay anything to put these demos together. I think you get up to three minutes of AI footage completely for free. And while we're talking about AI avatars, I came across a really interesting video from Reed Hoffman, who is the creator of LinkedIn. Basically, he cloned himself in a video and then used Eleven Labs to clone his voice as well. And then he just had a conversation with himself, which was really interesting. And by the end of the video, he was being interviewed by the AI and the AI was coming up with some really challenging questions for him to answer. I highly recommend checking out the video. I think he has really good information and a really good outlook 
on the future of how we will adopt AI as a society. A research team at NVIDIA came out with the ability to do large scale Nerf scans. And to put that in easy to understand words, basically you have the ability to scan an area up to 25 square kilometers large and then render it in real time on a computer. It's really incredible. They have some interesting examples over on their website where they scanned a racetrack. They also used a scan of some drone footage to do this aerial shot. And then the most impressive example is they basically allow you to walk around a gigantic downtown scene with the scan. And so it's really interesting to think about how this tool may be used in the future especially whenever you pair it with current technology that is already used in Hollywood. For example, if you were to take a large scale scan of this, let's say it's a scan of downtown Los Angeles, and you were working on a virtual production set where basically the backgrounds were digitally implanted, you could hypothetically move your set to any real world location that has been scanned using this tool. So if you want to be next to one building, you can just simply move the scan around, the entire 3D scene would move, and then you would have the ability to shoot your scene. You can, of course, use this for all sorts of other really interesting applications like video games. And it's really interesting to imagine how this type of technology will more than likely change entertainment forever. There's also some really interesting research that came out this week related to prompt-based image editing. It's really interesting. Basically, the team at Adobe partnered up with the University of California, San Diego to showcase what is possible whenever you use prompts to edit images. So there's a few different examples here. In one example, they say they want to move and in-paint a frog on a flower and he moves. There's another video where they have this scene of a wave and they basically want the sun to be surrounded by the wave. And so they are able to comp that in. And then there's another example where it contextually understands removing one rock from this really interesting fantasy scene. So I would say that pretty soon, especially because the Adobe team is behind this technology, you might be able to contextually change images inside of Photoshop by just describing what you want. There was also some really interesting image editing tools using AI prompting from the team at RenderNet. Now, if you're not already familiar with RenderNet, it's basically a online application that allows you to use a lot of the more advanced AI control features, but through a really clean online platform. Now to use the tool, all you have to do is go to the RenderNet website and go ahead and click launch app. Once you're inside of their platform, just go down to change clothing. And from here, you have the ability to use an AI image or you can upload an image yourself. I have this image of this man walking down the street in Paris and I want to change his jacket. So all we have to do is drag and drop our image right there and we can say what we want to change. In this instance, I want to change his jacket to a red jacket. And let's go ahead and click change it. After about a minute, it will create your image. Here is the final result. You can see we have this image of this man walking down the street. And yeah, he's wearing a red jacket. I don't think if I ever saw this image, I would think anything was off. I also think that the color grading and the compositing looks pretty good. You can see that the gray of the man's jacket matches the gray of his pants, and it feels like it lives inside of the scene. I did some testing with some other images earlier today. So for example, I have this image of me and I wanted to change the shoes that I was wearing. So I prompted in cowboy boots and this was the result. So kind of some loafers mixed with cowboy boots. They're actually kind of cool, but this is not exactly what I was going for. And I was curious if this would work on other things that are not clothing. So we have this image here of Shelby walking our dog and I wanted to change our dog into an alligator. So I prompted in alligator and this is the result that it gave me. It's like a half dog, half alligator creature. I have no idea what's happening, but uh, this is absolutely fantastic. A team from China also came out with the ability to edit 3D models 
using prompts. It's really interesting. Basically, over on the white paper, they explain how you can do many different things with this new model. The first is you can generate a 3D model just through conversation. So you type in a prompt and you see a 3D model. That's been around for a while now, but the quality of this one does look pretty good. The second thing you can do is edit that 3D model by simply painting. So for example, we have a 3D model of a dinosaur with his mouth closed, but then you can simply go in and paint and say that you want his mouth to be open and it will render a new 3D model. There are a few other examples over on the white paper's website. For example, they have a banana and very easily they can convert that banana into a whale banana just by dragging and explaining what you want the new 3D model to look like. And you also have the ability to change the geometry through drawing. So you have the ability to, in this example, open up a Pokeball using arrows and painting, and then you can actually insert objects into that 3D model. So you get to combine two models together using artificial intelligence. A team from China also came out with a brand new AI video tool that looks like a very real competitor to Sora. The tool is called Vaidu, and basically it allows you to type in a prompt and generate videos. Now, these videos are up to 16 seconds long in 1080p, so the quality is pretty decent. Now, they have some pretty interesting examples where they basically are prompting very similar prompts to the Sora demos that we've seen over the last few months. And while I will say I don't think the quality is quite as good as Sora, it is really interesting to think that there is at least more than one competitor out there that is capable of creating really dynamic AI movement. Some of the scenes really are borderline cinematic. For example, we have a shot in here of an establishing shot of a ship in the fog and it really does look like it came directly from a movie. We also have a scene where a man is a detective and he's kind of looking around. And really, it looks like it was shot on a really nice cinematic camera. The tool is also capable of creating multi-shot compilations in a similar world. So you can prompt in and basically get different shots and camera angles, which is really interesting. I wanted to do a quick side-by-side. -side. So you have Sora on the right and Vaidu on the left. Sora is definitely better, but Vaidu is a really interesting competitor. And I'd say at this point, Vaidu is creating the second best AI video generations that I've seen up to this point. And speaking of Sora, we came across a really interesting interview this last week with Shy Kids, the people behind that Airhead AI video that was basically used as a demo for Sora. Basically, they talked about the process of putting together their short film, and they described the process of using Sora as being a lot more like a slot machine where you type in your prompt and you hope you get <laughs> what you prompted. And they said that there really was a pretty extensive post-processing process whenever they were working on their project. They had to go in and change the color of the balloon, comp in different assets, and even do some rotoscoping inside of After Effects. They also said that when using Sora, they had a 300 to one render to use ratio. That's 300 shots that they had to generate before they had one that could make it in the final film. They said that renders took about 10 to 20 minutes and it didn't really matter if you're rendering just a few seconds or a longer scene, it takes about the same amount of time. If you want more information on how Sora works, you can click the link below this video to the interview with the Shy Kids. And speaking of AI films, last week we launched our AI trailer competition in partnership with Submachine. You have until June 6th to upload your very own AI trailer for your shot at winning an Apple Vision Pro. We can't wait to see what you create. The team at Hyper also came out with a new gallery this last week that showcases awesome AI projects that use their tool. You have the ability to submit your own film to the gallery. All you have to do is click on the little light bulb icon on the left, and you can basically upload your submissions. There's some pretty cool submissions. It really reminds me a lot of our AI gallery page over on Curious Refuge. 
uh, but these specific projects use Hyper. And speaking of Hyper, we were checking out some of the examples earlier today, and they were really blowing our mind. Hyper really is one of the best AI video generators that are out there. There was this shot here of this woman riding a boat. Looks amazing. We have Batman standing near the ocean. Looks pretty cool. This one really blew our mind. It's basically AI footage of a drone scene and the camera is flying and it looks pretty darn realistic. There's a lot of parallaxing and consistency with the objects that are actually behind the objects in your scene. So again, Hyper is one of the best AI video generators out there and it's still completely free. So I recommend checking it out. Enrollment is now open for our AI advertising and AI filmmaking course. This is going to be one of our biggest sessions ever. And we are going to cover some of the latest AI trends and techniques that you need to know. You'll network with artists at some of the biggest studios and companies in the world and be welcomed into the most friendly AI community in the world. And speaking of the community, I want to formally invite you to check out our AI events page. The Curious Refuge team is actually hosting meetups all around the world. We just finished hosting a meetup in San Francisco that looked amazing. And we also have a meetup in Kansas City and in London coming up in a few weeks. Shelby and I will also be speaking at the Cannes Film Festival this year in just a couple of weeks. So if you will be at that event, we would love to say hello. We're also looking at hosting an AI filmmaking meetup at the event. Be on the lookout for more information over on our AI film events page. And speaking of AI film events, I want to let you know about AI on the lot. It's one of our favorite AI filmmaking events. Unfortunately, we won't be able to be there, but if you happen to be in the Los Angeles area, I highly recommend going to the event. You'll find more information below this video. This last week, we also sat down with Nicholas Newbert, who is one of the best AI art directors out there. Nicholas shared his experience working with Jared Leto on a project and how going viral with AI has transformed his career. We're going to launch that very soon. In language model news, inside of ChatGPT, they now can store information that you type in as a memory to help you whenever creating future prompts. Basically, information that you type in, it will remember on your behalf so you don't have to reprompt again and again. And that brings us to our AI films of the week. Our first film is called To Dear Me. It was an AI assisted film that basically integrated live action footage with style transfers and some other AI concepts to create a film that actually won the Beijing Film Festival 2024. The team used Comfy UI and Stable Diffusion to create a really beautiful stylized film. I highly recommend checking it out. We also came across a film this last week called Son of Life. The film is a really great example of consistency between shots. They did a great job at using a black and white color grade along with some film grains to really give it a nice style. Some of the shots in here look realistic, like it looks like an actual real film. And there's some really interesting scenes where people are talking and the talking does look pretty darn convincing. Our next film that I want to point out is called Caddyator. It's basically a concept for a theatrical release about a cat who's a gladiator. <laughs> it's really funny. A lot of the shots look really, really good. And I gotta say, I would totally watch this one. And our final film of the week comes from Able Art, who is one of our favorite AI video explorers. They basically put together a scene called The Dinner, which is a five character scene that uses AI. And it's a really clever use of video to video, image to video. And he created this 3D environment that helped to create some really dynamic camera moves. It's a great example of using a 3D tool with AI video to create a dynamic scene. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of AI Film News. Of course, you can subscribe over on our website to get AI Film News delivered directly to your email inbox, and you'll get a free five-part course that's an intro to AI filmmaking whenever you subscribe. If you're looking to go to Cannes, be sure to check out the Curious Refuge website where you'll find more information 
about the panels that Shelby, me, and Dave are putting on at the event. We can't wait to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.